Hello everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my sewing room. Today I'm going to follow on from my last week's video where I said that I had been shopping and I bought some fabric. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am about this fabric because I haven't really bought a lot of fabric this year at all because I've been trying to shrink down my um, existing stash and I, I am getting on top of it and it is staying within its contained area so I've managed to um, get the overflow of fabric into a contained area which I am really pleased about but because I had been paid for some commission work I have spent it all. <laughs> I've spent it all on fabrics and patterns and as well as that I've received some um, uh, subscription boxes in so I thought I would share all of it with you today. So first of all I think I'll go through the subscription boxes because I'm going to make you wait for the fabric. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through the subscription boxes um, and I, I'm hoping that by now anyone that gets these subscription boxes will um, have already received them and you'll be aware of them. Um, so the first one is just my little subscription to Specky Seamstress for her labels. So um, if you haven't seen these already just look away or close your ears for a minute whilst I just quickly go through them. There's only um, there's seven labels um, in the uh, subscription that you received and the first one is uh, this one so there's three of these came through and it just says on there it doesn't have to be perfect so they're really nice I like those and then you also get four little ones and I think I think this is a little daisy so there's four of those so all together seven so that's uh, that was really really nice I've added them to my my little box of woven labels and I am starting to put them into my clothes and I keep forgetting to show you but I will try to remember um, next time when I make um, future garments so that subscription box um, was followed by a bigger subscription box and it's the one that I joined a while back and this is only my second one that I've received and it's the um, Studio 77 so I've already opened it because I couldn't wait I've already opened it and in the box has it has um, a half a meter of waterproof canvas and it, it is this beautiful and it is such such a lovely color this beautiful pink and orange canvas and it's waterproof and I'm not sure what I would make with it at the moment, but um, I might try and make um, a bag out of that soon, actually, because I have been thinking about um, making a bag and there's quite a lot there. There's half a metre there, so that's quite a significant amount. So with that also came um, two metres of this floral zipper tape with the, the silver teeth, and that's number five. That's a number five size, which seems to be the popular size for bag making. So there is two metres of that, and that's really, really lovely. And two little bags. What's in the bags? Let's have a look. Oh, right, OK. Um, these are... Uh, magnetic clasps and I haven't seen any of these before and I don't know how to use them so I think I'm going to have to go onto her site just to get an idea of how you use them and there's the other bits all uh, it's magnetic so they're all stuck together but it'd be interesting I could see something like that being used on a clutch bag um, so I will add those to my little stash of bag hardware. Uh, and the other bag has, oh God, right, lots. Oh, right, okay. It has some 
flower silver studs so these little flower studs um, and there are five of those and it also has in that bag some zipper pulls so there's four of these little dangly things so they've got a protective thing on them so hopefully you can see that that's a really nice dangly pull so a bit of hardware to go into my bag um, collection or stash she also always puts in a tea bag so this is um, strawberry lemonade I haven't tried any of these yet but I will do I've, I leave them up here and I forget about them I must take them downstairs and she also puts in a few little stickers so there's one there and there's the other one there so that's a really nice bag I like getting those they're not monthly they're every two months and um, which is quite nice because um, it gives you an idea of thinking about what you make and I haven't used the other bag any of the stuff that I got in my original my first box um, so I'm building up my little stash of bag, bag stuff and um, when I get the urge to make a bag I know that I have a, a nice sort of selection to choose from and also in the box you get a booklet and it gives you a few designers and of ideas of what you could use the canvas for and everything that you get in your box and what you could use it on or, or make so that's quite uh, handy to have so I will look at that a bit more later so there are two very um, exciting boxes I love receiving stuff like that because I can't I can never remember when they when they come and then when they do come through the letterbox it's it's quite nice to um, to come and it always cheers my my day up so the next thing I'm going to show you is all of the patterns I bought now last week I made um, pattern emporiums take the chance shirt dress and I was so impressed by the instructions and how many different options you had with that one pattern that I went off and bought a few more from her website because I have been thinking about building a capsule wardrobe because most of the things in my wardrobe now I find that I will pull something out and I've mentioned this a few times where I will pull something out and I just don't have anything else to go with it so I'm trying to be I'm still trying to make all the things that I love to make but I'm also aware that I need to um, balance them out with some plain things that coordinate better so I thought I would start off by treating myself to some patterns so last week I made the take a chance take the chance shirt dress so you've seen that one because I made the floral dress last week and absolutely love it um, so the additional patterns I bought were um, the be mine balloon sleeve top and I just like this because I thought I could make quite a few of these up in plain fabrics and they would go with um, some trousers that I'm planning to make because I made some camouflage seaforth pants a while back and I just thought it would look really nice with maybe a plain black or white top so I need to get some plain garments in my wardrobe so that's one of the patterns um, then I followed that up with a go to fit and flare dress and normally I wouldn't buy anything that was sleeveless so these dresses are all sleeveless and this is for stretch fabrics and I really want to get into making more stretch clothes um, because they're more comfortable and I also find that um, especially in the winter you can layer them up uh, and that's my plan to make some more stretch clothing so these sort of things I would probably put under a denim jacket for instance uh, and it comes on with lots of different options so that's um, an, my second dress pattern and um, I'm hoping that 
that will be as successful as my Take the Chance dress that I made last week. But this one in particular, um, I really wanted. It's the Bound to Be tea. Now, <laughs> well, I've never made a t-shirt. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I have never made a t-shirt. So this is her um, Bound to Be tea. And there are lots of options with this. It's, there's lots of different um, neckline um, versions. You can have uh, a crew neck, a turtleneck, a mid-length, a lower scoop neck. It also comes with lots of different sleeve options. You can have cap sleeve, short sleeve, long sleeve, three-quarter sleeve, sleeve with cutter. Lots of options with um, this pattern. And this triggered me off to buy some of the fabric that I'm going to show you in a moment so I was um, I'm really quite keen to make this already and I know that with this pattern I could also make quite a lot of white or um, black grey you know the plain colours that I need to have in my wardrobe to work better with some of my other colourful printed fabrics and trousers now I got um, those patterns were all PDF and when I buy a PDF pattern I always send the AO version off um, to be printed because I am not somebody who likes to print off A4 sheets and stick them together. I did a pattern once it was 90 pages and I just lost the will to live after it so when I do buy any patterns that are PDF I will always send them off to be printed out on AO and then when they come back as you know I'm somebody who prints off my pattern so I will trace off my pattern so I've always got my original pattern in its original state and I can always go back to it as many times as I want so as like most of us some of us go up and down in weight I can just I have no fear of ever losing my original pattern so I sent it off to a company called CLC printing now I hadn't used them before because I have been using Fabuloso but I thought I would give this company a try and they print off on this sort of thicker white paper it's very similar to what we would normally print off on a home printer and um, it's really good quality and the print is very clear but I also printed, got them to print off the instruction booklets um, because her, um, I think it's Kate, Kate's lady who designs all of these patterns, she goes into all of the, um, just ev every element of the process from cutting out, laying out, sizing, all the different options. Every part of it is covered in her instruction booklet. So. I treated myself and got got these printed off because um, whenever I do it I always run out of ink so and it's done so they all came back with all of the patterns printed and all of the instruction manuals um, printed as well with this lovely um, coil um, spine which makes it easier to flip through patterns so really pleased with those and itching to get on with making a t-shirt so bear with me I'm just gonna have a quick cup of tea because I've been out today so mm. right so the fabric hold your horses let's go for it oh now with the t-shirt I thought um my daughter and I actually went to purple stitches now I live in the south of England and I have found that there aren't that many places that you can go to to actually physically touch fabric, stroke fabric. But I found purple stitches when I went to the Stitch Festival, I think it was in March and um, I was quite impressed because they had lots of lovely zips and they do lots of unusual stuff like uh, little tiny buttons so they do the the doll making stuff which I came across when I was making all of the lunar lapping Alfie rabbits 
and they do zips and zip pulls and um, quilting which I'm also into they really do a, a wide selection of stuff so when I looked up fabric stores near me their name popped up and they're about a 40 minute drive away so um, me and my daughter went out for a little trip to their or to their store and I can't tell you how excited I was to go to an actual store so I put a little tiny little video in of um, when we got there and um, we opened the door and I just filmed a little video of the entrance but the fabric was beautiful and it took me ages to make a decision um, what to buy so I bought some jersey fabric to start with and I bought some cottons to make some shirts one for myself and one for my husband and um, I bought some more fabric from Stitch Fabrics and I'll cover that in a minute so I'm just going to go through what I bought from Purple Stitches first so the first one is this beautiful floral jersey knit and it's just gorgeous I just love it so with that uh, you know that I fill out my card so this has already been washed and I tumble dried it and I write out my card so I've took a little swatch from the corner so um, I always do that before I put it in the washing machine and I wrote out my card so this is the card that I write out so if I don't get around to stitching this fabric up straight away I have all of the information there that I need so when I come to making this whether it's a month, six months, a year down the line, I know all the details I need to pick the right fabric for the project. So on here I just put things um, that would really help me um, make a better choice of fabric when I pick a garment and things like the weight of the fabric, it's 175 grams um, per square meter and this is 95% cotton with 5% spandex so it's got a nice stretch and recovery to it and um, so this card will go into my fabric in index box and I bought one and a half meter so it will go into the one and a half meter section so that is this beautiful floral jersey can't stop stroking it it's so nice right so that's my first bit and also when it goes into my stash if you've watched me for a while you'll know that it will also tag it up and that will go into a pacific area within my um, storage unit and that's sort of it's it's fabric number 81 and it's storage unit number six so I know exactly where to find it when it comes to it so it's my first bit of jersey jersey knit so the second piece I bought this is um, a one and a half meters again which will make up um, a long sleeve version of that t-shirt I just showed you and and this has just got a little motto on it and it says I will I can I said I can and I will and it's got little um, shapes on it yellow and orange shapes so I just thought it was quite sweet and as as usual I've got my index card and that's the same it's 175 grams per square meter it's 95% cotton and 5% spandex um, both of these fabrics are directional and I also put that on the card as well because obviously that will have an effect when you um, lay your pattern pieces out on your fabric to make sure I have enough. So they're my first two pieces of fabric. So apart from the jersey I decided to buy some cotton and make my husband a shirt because I made him a shirt at Christmas and he he really loved it and I made it as a surprise and um, I got the fit just right um, 
but the fabric I saw for him because he's got an obsession with the sea he likes the sea he likes sea animals and I came across this beautiful octopus fabric so this octopus fabric let me find my little card is um it's a Wyndham fabric and it's called Whale Tales by Catherine Quinn uh, I they only had a metre and a half of this left so I literally um, asked for everything they had on their um, roll so this was the last of the roll it's uh, one and a half metres by 110 centimetres it's mid-weight cotton it's 100% cotton and um, this will make up the shirt M6044 I think it's M0644 if it's not right I'll correct it on the screen but I just thought this was such a nice fabric and such a nice colour. He will love that. And I showed him that when I got home and he approved. So he wants me to crack on with it now. So um, once that vid once this video is finished, that will be the first thing I make. So watch this space. So the next fabric I bought is this one. And this one's called... Um, bug race navy i managed to get two and a half meters of this and it's 110 centimeters wide this is 180 grams per square meter and it is 100 percent cotton so um it's a it's a sort of mid-weight cotton um it would, you know it would make a really good shirt and i just liked um the design on it uh, the design is um, directional, so I have to make sure that I'm aware of that when I cut that out. And um, that would make a really nice shirt. I probably won't make a shirt in this until later in the year because there's enough there to make a long sleeve shirt. So that's um, my last piece of fabric that I bought from Purple Stitches. But whilst I was in the store, I came across some labels. I'm a bit label obsessed at the moment. So I'll just go through what I bought. So I bought um, four of these. And I just thought I hadn't seen anything like this before. And it just says, just my size. And then on the back, it's got a little pair of scissors. And I just thought they were really sweet. Then I bought um, four of these and it says, thanks, I made it. And on the back, it's just a little flower. And then last of all, I bought Made For Me with a rainbow. And on the back is a cloud, but I don't know how well you can see that. So another selection of labels to go into my label box really do need to start making some serious garments to use all these labels up um now because purple stitches um are quite well known for all of their their zips i bought some zip pulls because i do buy a lot of continuous zipper tape from zipper station and I do find that I run out of um, a zipper pool. So when I was in the store, I found the, I got some beautiful, beautiful pools and there are lots of choice. But I just bought some um, different ones. I bought this star, an open star. So I bought a few of those. I bought, and that's in a rainbow effect. This is a closed star in a gunmetal colour great for black zips and a donut a donut pull that's in gunmetal as well and last of all another donut pull in a chrome just chrome silver and I bought uh, I bought about four or five of those so I've really got a nice um, selection of those as well so my last two pieces of fabric were um, were something I bought 
but I bought it because I really liked the fabric but I haven't got a clue what I'm going to use it for but I knew that if I didn't buy it it wouldn't hang around for very long and it's it came from a company called Stitch Fabrics who are based in London and when they put up their unique fabrics I do find that they go really quickly so when I saw this I did um and ah for a while because I'd already spent quite a bit on all the other fabrics that I bought from Purple Stitches but I did think if I don't get this I'll regret it and this artist is um, I just love her so the artist that's depicted in this fabric is called Frida Carlo Frida Carlo that's it and this is the fabric and it is absolutely gorgeous isn't that nice what a beautiful color so I ordered this off the stitch fabrics and it was very reasonably priced it was nine pounds a meter and um, when it came through it came through with this information across the band so it says it's silk it's not silk it's not silk but stitch fabrics do actually put on their description of the fabric what it is uh, which are really grateful for so I've got my little card here so it is actually 20% bamboo 40% viscose and 40% polyester um, but even so that it is a beautiful beautiful fabric and I can just see myself um, making up a really really pretty shirt or a really floaty jacket that's what keeps coming to my mind so I did get four meters of this um, because it's quite narrow so it is 110 centimeters wide and before I put it in the wash I also um, overlocked it because it frayed like mad so I know this is going to be an absolute nightmare to sew so um, I know whatever I make uh, it has to be quite simple um, but I haven't decided what to do with that yet and same goes for this fabric because this is also Frida Kahlo and this is called um, Vintage Patchwork and this is so colourful let me hold up so you can see I mean it is absolutely beautiful so I can just see myself making some sort of flowy jacket to wear in the summer over a white t-shirt if I can make my white t-shirt and it's semi sheer so you can you can see through it but it is absolutely beautiful and this is exactly the same composition as the previous fabric 20% bamboo 40% viscous and 40% polyester so it's just it just is so colorful I love colorful stuff like this so um, let me know what you think and let me know what you think I should make from it and any suggestions about you know floaty jackets yeah please put in the comments because I would be really interested to get some ideas um, and make something because the weather here is still trying to be nice and I can see myself wearing something like that with a nice white t-shirt underneath and that sort of um, as a flowy jacket. So those are all of my fabrics. So um, I have a lot to get on with and, um, and I hope that you have enjoyed seeing them all. Uh, next week I had been been working on a few things this week because I've been waiting to do this video I am itching to cut into some of that fabric I have been playing around with um, other things in my sewing room so I have been using some of this now do you remember this stuff this stuff is the insole bright and 
I bought it on a whim because I was sort of um, browsing through a website and I bought a few bits and bobs and I bought some of this and I thought this would make up really nice um, coasters and pot holders. So I have been playing around with some coasters because I thought it'd be an opportunity to use some of my scrap fabric up and also practice my binding. Um, so I've made two coasters up in different sizes so when I come to show you next week you can give me your opinion on which coaster size you think is the best and I'm going to try and also make um, some other things with it this week from my scrap box because um, every so often I like to revisit my scrap box and just use some of that fabric up because I do have a huge amount of scrap I'm sure most of us have a huge amount of scrap and every so often I like to visit it and just use something up so the last thing I made was the, the bucket hat and that was quite successful and Sometimes by mixing up some of the fabrics, you can make some wacky things. And so I intend to use some of this. I also used um, some of this. So when I made the Cavalcade travel bags, I used Soft and Stable by Annie. And every so often I get little off cuts. Let me get it out of the bag. I get little off cuts like this so I don't throw them away because these off cuts I you know you can cut a circle and you can make a, a coaster so and sometimes if they don't fit completely I will just sort of um, cut off a section and then I will place them together and and quilt them together so these don't get wasted I will use these up because um, this stuff isn't cheap so it's nice to also use some of this up as well so that's soft soft and stable by my Annie so next week you will see some of the things that I've been using with my Insol Bright and my soft and Annie and I have also in the background I've been working on my Queen of Diamonds quilt and I've been putting the borders on the diamonds so I'm hoping that once I've got all of those diamonds finished with their borders on I will be able to do a separate video dedicated to my Queen of Diamonds quilt to just give you an update of how that's progressing because that's one of those slow makes and um, I haven't done anything like um, this quilt before so I'm learning as I'm going along and I'm just picking up information from the Facebook group that supports this um, project to pick up um, you know tips and tricks as, uh, as I go along and um, produce something that looks reasonable at the end of it so at this stage I'm putting the borders on they're going on really well so I'm hoping to be able to show you that very soon so I think that's it for today. I, I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, if you aren't a subscriber, it'd be lovely if you could subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, thank you for staying with me. And I will see you all very soon. Have a lovely week. Take care. Bye.